Hey, but welcome back to another video. This is FPL Fran, and we're looking at my game week two transfer plans. The key thing this week was that it was a week where we could consider triple captaining Holland. And by the end of the deadline, I actually decided to go for the triple captaincy on Holland. My main reasoning for that was that um, with the sort of information we have on doubles, I think it really depends on your judgments on whether the mystery chip is going to be usable on a double or not. And I lean towards the direction that the mystery chip could be used on a double. So therefore, this was one of the best single game week fixtures over the entire season for Holland. Uh, for the specific reason that we knew that Holland's minutes would be good, that there wasn't any congestion, and that also, ultimately, it's it's a good chance to jump on a Holland captaincy before everyone has, you know, the same captain, right? Some people are still on a solo only draft. Some people are on, on a Holland draft. And because of that, and because a lot of people were uncertain about using the triple captain, I just thought it was a good opportunity to differentiate myself. Because sometimes what happens in the back half of later seasons in FPL is we all tend to captain the exact same triple captain, uh, and it probably works out quite well because it's a double. But I just took this opportunity because of the sort of pros that I mentioned. And obviously there were huge cons. The mystery chip can still only be maybe played in the single, and I'll be wrong, but happy to make that bet, and I'm really happy that it paid off. So in the end, I got 87 points. My rank right now is 1.7 million. Still, at the end of the day, a lot of players did well. Sun did well, Salah did well, Palmer did well. These players are not in my team. Arsenal defense also did really well, except I would say Watkins was probably to blame for that too, because um, he had such a golden chance, and unfortunately, he didn't have the chance to take it. But that's that. So we got 87 points. Uh, when I look at my team, what was the transfer I made last week in Gaming 2? The transfer that I made last week in Gaming 2 uh, was actually to go for Rico Lewis. And Rico Lewis is someone that I'm still very happy about because we didn't or we weren't quite sure whether he was actually going to start for sure in Gaming 2. But he did in the end. And it seems like the role that he has in his team is very, very specific, right? I cannot see Walker suddenly just replacing Rico Lewis in the team. If anything, I sort of see Walker playing as a bit of a right center back in the system, the sort of a kanji role. And I feel it's very, very different to what Rico Lewis is doing right now. Who knows? Uh, Rico Lewis might not start in the future. But I think the, the big pro, actually, is if you look towards the future game weeks, we have... Man City in the first day on Saturday, and then we also have Man City on the first day in Game Week 4. And then we also have Man City, unfortunately, by Game Week 5, their worst fixture, which is Arsenal, which is on the second day. So it's very possible, given the fact that we do have leaks in this FPL space, that I might be able to chance two more Rico Lewis starts on the key fixtures. So Man City versus Brentford in Game Week 4, and then Man City versus West Ham in Game Week 3. So those are my thoughts on Rico Lewis. I feel like the transfer actually panned out really well because we also had a Kovacic injury. So... Technically, there's less midfield bodies. We know Rodri's still not ready to play. And I'm not saying that Lewis is a DM. It's very clear he plays a different role, a little bit of a, a half right back, half midfielder role in a diamond. And, and I do like the role that he plays. And I think it's 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 one where they lack some bodies right now to play it. And I think it's very possible that Lewis continues to play, which is why I'm happy with the move. Um, he was also very close to scoring. And also the chance conceded was just the one, which is very usual for Man City, but I won't complain about it. Uh, Poro and Trent, very, very good. Still happy with these picks. Obviously, Poro has a tougher fiction next week. We'll talk about that later. Um, Henderson, it does look pretty poor for Crystal Palace. This was the, the one good game on paper, I suppose. The next good game on paper is Game Week 4, because next week is Chelsea, and that's a tough game. So Leicester at home is hopefully the game where we can get, hopefully, a clean sheet. Maybe something more, if possible. As far as the midfield, though, just looking at that now, I'm still happy with Saka. I think, yes, of course, Palmer did amazing, Sun did amazing, but you also have to contextualize it a little bit, right? Foden is probably the one midfielder who is, unfortunately, for a lot of managers who have actually gone into Foden, that was just terrible news, right? Him being out of the squad, we didn't know it, we didn't get a leak. I couldn't react. I don't think I could react to that if I had Foden in my team uh, because we didn't see any leaks around the deadline. So when I think about it over the next over the last two weeks, Saka has been done has done a com comparable job to let's say Palmer and Son. So as things stand, I'm very happy with going for Saka. And keep in mind, of course, he's a cost saving compared to someone like Palmer. Um, now I have Nkunku in my team, and, and it's very clear that I've never ever said that Nkunku can cover Palmer. The reality is Nkunku is much cheaper than Palmer, and so he's a spot on our team where we try to go for some players who can hopefully do well uh, in some cheaper spots. And unfortunately, as the case turns out. And Kunku is not very valuable to Enzo's team. Or rather, there's too many attacking bodies as well. That means that Nkunku just simply isn't a priority. We also saw Palmer actually play within the Wolves game as effectively a 10 um, in that inside position. And I thought he was brilliant there. And so was Madueke, to be honest. Um, and you can already see the left wing depth in terms of Neto, who obviously can also play right wing as well. Uh, but Mudrik starting just meant that Nkunku wasn't really able to see any action whatsoever until Palmer came off the field. 
And that was a huge concern to me. And for that reason, I think Nkunku has to be a sell. My plan right now, as of game week two, is to sell Nkunku to Rogers in as of this evening, really. So I'm going to try to get this video out, hopefully before the end of the deadline, or rather the price changes today, if it matters for you managers. I think what is nice is that if you are considering the Nkunku to Rogers move yourself, you can actually pocket a lot of money with this move. And the reason why I'm considering Nkunku to Rogers as opposed to Nkunku to, let's say, Morgan Gibbs White or, let's say, Leon Bailey is because I do think that the cost saving of the 1.5 million can be very useful for my team going forwards. Who knows what I plan to do with the team in the future? But if I go for Rogers and he works out well as a pick and I have some other issues that crop up in other spots... I can use that 1.5 million to actually upgrade some of the other players of my team, like a Winx, for example, to increase the depth within my team. Maybe adding it on top of one of the other defenders that I have to actually push towards, let's say, a 6.0 defender, and that could really work out, particularly if there's the off chance that I don't go with the wild card in the end. But obviously, I've used a lot of free transfers. This will be another one, but I am very comfortable with the move. I will make this move before the end of the deadline for the price changes and rises for Sunday, which is the 25th of August. Um, but let's quickly move on quickly towards my transfer plans in the future. So with the transfer plans that I suggested, what my plan is to do is, is Nkunku to Rogers. But we don't know what's going to happen in game week four. We don't know what's going to happen in game week five. I don't even know what's exactly going to happen up until the transfer window deadline. So it's very possible that by the end of the game week three deadline, you have the transfer window closing and you get more information on FPL altogether. Um, if I really feel it's possible or really feel it's necessary, I will maybe wild card three if my team is in an absolute state right now though i'm very happy with how the team looks if you look at the team for game week three i've got rogers in the team i play consa versus leicester i play lewis versus west ham and i bench poro versus newcastle now this is very close i'm sure a lot of managers might want to just play poro versus consa because poro has been playing really well and obviously is incredibly advanced as you can see but there's a huge gulf in terms of the attacking quality of leicester and clearly newcastle at least when newcastle's at home as opposed to away so that's sort of the the prevailing thought here as far as captaincy and vice captaincy it's just going to be harlan and saka nothing crazy about that i think it's very clear jao pedro just reluctantly playing him versus arsenal i did slightly prefer him to armstrong in game week one happy that he got the goal in game week two it might not be great for me in game week three, uh, but I'm still sort of betting against Arsenal defense here. So hopefully Jao Pedro can do something. In game week four, the plan for me right now is to roll. The reason why is when you look at my defense, it's actually quite stellar. Once again, this is a week to bench Poro. I don't have any issues with keeping Poro on my team because he's not a problem. But Poro, of course, is someone who doesn't really need to sit my team because he's playing versus Arsenal. I've got Lewis versus Brentford at home prospectively right now. But as you can see, if Lewis can't play in game week four, then all I need to do is just play Consa over Lewis. And it's not too much loss of an expected points value. As far as Dunk, he just has an amazing fixture here. So he's a very easy start versus Ipswich at home. This is the good game for Henderson as well. So game week four is where I expect to make quite a lot of my gains back. In this situation, I'm actually keeping Bruno Fernandes for Southampton away. So I feel like this is a good game. Unfortunately, with the Nkunku transfer forced, I was previously thinking about maybe moving off of Saka and Bruno in game week four. But now I'm actually quite comfortable with keeping Saka uh, and Bruno because I have bigger fish to fry. And that fish is on clearly Nkunku, who's a problem child. Um, Eze still seems like an amazing pick in the game. As you can see, the projected points are still really good. But not only that, I just think the reality is Eze and Bruno are types of players who've gotten a lot of points. Now, Bruno's early substitution for the 78 minutes substitution versus Brighton, I think is, look, unexpected. We want him to be a 90 minutes player, but you also have to say that that's probably a little bit of game state. Maybe he was a little bit off of it, kind of like Watkins in the Arsenal game. Scott McTominay is also seemingly leaving towards Napoli. So there's less bodies in the midfield, which means that hopefully there's less substitutions for Bruno in the future. So I'm pretty happy with the team as it stands in game week four. And I'm now pushing my sort of major transfers towards game week five. And keep in mind, of course, I am still planning to wildcard six. So when we head over now towards game week five, as you can see, I have two players in my team who I would say aren't amazing for captaincy options. When we look at Saka, when we look at Holland, this is the bad week for them. Yes, it's a mirror matchup. We've seen Arsenal and City time and time before. It is usually quite a low scoring game. I can't imagine it will be too different. Haaland obviously looks great to start the season. He looks better than he did in the 23-24 version of himself. But even still, I have to say Salah looks brilliant. Liverpool still look brilliant. So why wouldn't I take the chance to just simply move Haaland towards Salah if possible and actually get the much better captaincy? Because if you can see here on the right-hand side, Salah is actually a 7.9 sort of expected point captain here in game week five. And so I think it actually makes a lot of sense, particularly because Saka has a tough game here, Man City away, to move Saka into Salah here 
And then to obviously bin off Haaland for Watkins, because even though Haaland and Watkins is a drop of, let's say, 1.2 in terms of points, I'm gaining so much more between Saka and Salah and adding in the captaincy gain that I do think those two free transfers make a lot of sense. On top of that, I think my defense for this week in Game Week 5 doesn't have any issues. I bench Lewis, I have Conce who's waiting in the wings to have a great fixture versus Wolves at home, and I also have Dunk who's also versus Nottingham Forest at home, a team that aren't particularly good at attack, but clearly are good at defense, and so I'm totally happy with playing Dunk here, and Pedro Porro and Trent both have great games. Technically, Crystal Palace are against Bruno, but I'll take it on the chin. I have to keep Bruno, and I probably am keeping Bruno for wildcard 6 because he's not a problem. You want to take problems out of your team. I don't have problems in my team here. I just think this is an opportunity to sort of get the better captaincy in game week five um, and then sort of continue with life. Now, this is transfer option sort of number one, I would say. And this uses all of my free transfers, which is obviously not ideal. This is not what I planned at the start of the season. But when things go wrong in FPL, I think you just have to address them as they go along. And that's that. If I don't go for the Salah move, I think the alternative option is simply just to uh, maybe go Saka into Sun. And then just to keep Haaland in my team. Because the benefit of doing that is that I still get, hopefully, maybe if we think that, let's say, Spurs look like a better team, and I think that Sun's a better captain, then I can captain Sun. Uh, but Sun clearly just has a better game than Saka anyways, and so there's a little bit of gain there as well. I could just ultimately captain someone like Haaland. But that's another transfer option that I have if I really feel like I'm completely struggling for transfers. Right now, I think it makes a lot more sense, as I said, going towards the option of going for Salah, and then going for the option of downgrading Holland towards Watkins. Because even though I do lose value between Holland and Watkins, I do gain much more value for getting the captaincy and the best captaincy option with Mo Salah here in this week. So if I just sort of make transfers here and I optimize my team, Salah ends up becoming the captain here. So that's sort of the plan in game week five. And that's sort of my transfer plans right now. So as I said, we're going to go with and Kunku to Morgan Rogers, save a little bit of money in the bank to keep a little bit of flexibility in place with my FPL team. If I need to sort of diverge my transfers, so here, of course, this is the expected plan, right? Based on the information that we know now, these are the transfers I want to make. But if anything happens in the future, and I feel like I want to make upgrades in other positions, or if something needs to be done with my FPL team, then I will make those moves with the 1.5 minute in the bank that I get from the Nkunku to Rogers transfer. And that's my transfer plans video for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Take care and goodbye.